Welcome to this video on Oncology Central. Today I'm with Jeff Edenfield. Thank you for joining us today. A pleasure. Could you briefly introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Jeff Edenfield. I'm a medical oncologist and I'm the uh, medical director for what's called ITOR. It's the Center for Translational Oncology Research at the Prisma Health Cancer Institute. Okay. Can you tell us how patients are currently selected for clinical trials and what improvements do you think could be made in this process? Sure. I think there are a lot of factors that influence whether or not a given patient goes on a clinical trial. There are physician factors, whether the doctor has enough time in the busy day to bring up the trial, uh, whether the doctor is familiar with the trial itself. So there are some barriers that are on the physician side. Um, there's also some barriers on the patient side. Patients need to be educated about clinical trials, that they're not um, just random experiments. These are carefully supervised and attended trials. Uh, I think in some cases there can even be financial barriers to enrolling in clinical trials. So all these have to coalesce perfectly to get somebody to enroll in a clinical trial. I would say that technology does offer us the opportunity to enroll more patients uh, if we knew how to select them more straightforwardly. And then what are the main challenges in launching oncology trials? Well, it, it really starts with the science. I mean, the science has to be good and you have to know that you have the population of patients that are suitable to enroll in the trial. Uh, it doesn't do much good to open a clinical trial if you don't see the types of patients that they're looking for. Uh, more and more, having access to good quality next gen generation sequencing is important because uh, many trials are directed at specific targeted agents. So being able to sequence accurately and quickly uh, is another thing that is important in enrollment in, in current clinical trials. Unfortunately, the regulatory environment com continues to be a challenge. Uh, it's very difficult to open clinical trials from a regulatory point of view. Uh, and I know there's a general consensus that this needs to be made better, but we're still in the midst of learning how to do that. And then how are oncology clinical trials changing due to advancements in, say, personalized medicine and complex adaptive study designs? Well, I think it's really helped, actually, to have uh, adaptive study designs because we can expand cohorts which seem to be benefit and, and benefiting from that trial and, and maybe even accomplish a good deal of the phase two work at the same time. So I think there's good logic in the adaptive design of many of the current basket trials. And I think it's actually helped getting more patients through the, uh, through the trial mechanism. Uh, obviously, I still think that, you know, it, it fundamentally comes down to a doctor and a patient, but many, uh, many of the newest trials have specific targets and being able to find those targets is critical. So how can the speed and efficiency of the design of clinical trials be improved? Well, one very obvious thing would be to be very cautious with respect to eligibility and ineligibility criteria. Uh, many times this seems to have just carried over from a time gone by and they may not be relevant any longer. So being careful to choose those factors which really would make a person eligible or ineligible is critical. Uh, I also think that being able to streamline the search for eligible patients would make clinical trial accrual go, go much more quickly. So if, for example, within your practice, you knew you had 10 patients with a specific mutation, being able to locate those patients quickly would very much facilitate if you had a trial for that mutation. So using the technology that's rapidly coming available to match patients to available trials is critical. And then looking forward, how would you like to see the field advance, say, in the next five to 10 years? Well, I would personally like to see uh, uh, an expansive outreach to minorities. I, I think we need to demystify the clinical trial mechanism to them as we can. I think as more and more sequencing information is available, having a ready way to search that information quickly. Uh, and this works on both sides of the equation, both on the physician practice side, have, how to identify those patients quickly, but also on the pharmaceutical company side, how to know where best to open those trials. Each of those are equally important. Uh, so I'd like to see improvements in that and have that become more of a standard issue at every uh, physician's office. Okay. And then finally, what talks are you most looking forward to at ASCO this year? Well, I think the whole, to me, the next uh, exciting domain is synthetic lethality. So trying to figure out what specific drug or combination of drugs creates a lethal situation for a cancer cell. And we're learning that there's a variety of ways to get to that position. So several of the talks that I'll be attending look at um, ATR and ATM inhibitors. Uh, I think that's fascinating that some of those are, are, appear to be very promising and effective with modest toxicity. Uh, I also think uh, learning to explore the concept of hyperprogression on immunotherapy is fascinating and hoping we can make some progress with that too. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Do you have any closing comments? 
No, I just encourage every patient and physician to inquire about clinical trials. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks. Pleasure.